Hello Forensic Accountants, this is our review of Chapter 3 on Benford's Law. This is the first of two chapters on this topic that I really do enjoy. So, this is the flow of the chapter, and here we go. The overview. The book talks about the history, uh, how Benford noticed that the first few pages of his log tables were more worn, talks about the data that he analyzed, the results that he got, the fact that he used a little bit of calculus, and the fact that he gave some, some insights as to why he thought the digits in list of numbers behaved this way. His final result looked something like this. In the first position, so the year is 2020 and the first digit is a 2, uh, in the first position I expect a 1 to be the first digit 30.1% of the time. I expect a 2 to be the first digit 17.6% of the time, and I expect the 9 to be the first digit in only about 4.6% of the time. In the second position, 0 can now be a second digit, can't be a first digit, but it can be a second digit. We go from about 12% down to 8.5%. This is far less skewed towards the lower digits. This in the third position, even less so, and in the fourth position, for all practical purposes, the digits are equally likely. There are some reasonably rigorous formulas, and it's given in the chapter as to how uh, these uh, numbers are calculated. Now, uh, if we go into Google Scholar, you should see some 1,700 papers uh, that cite uh, Benford's Law, and um, I've just reviewed some of the more important ones here. This was one that started off uh, sort of uh, in the 1960s, and this was important, and Pinkham showed that if we have a set of data that follows Benford's Law, I have the correct proportions of digits and the correct positions. If all the numbers were multiplied by a constant, I multiply all the numbers by 1.6 or 3.14, or actually can multiply them by a half, the new data set would also conform to Benford's Law. Uh, this is a little extract from the Da Vinci Code. This is the Fibonacci sequence, and that sequence follows Benford's Law perfectly. Uh, we have a few more under, um, we have quite a few more than I'm even showing you here. And the underlying premise of the literature is that authentic data should follow Benford's Law, and deviations could signal some type of irregularity. So we're not saying definitely fraud, but it could be error or a bias or something else. Maybe something innocent or maybe something not so innocent. These are Enron's numbers. And Enron uh, declared bankruptcy at the end of 2001. And this was uh, big news at the time. And what I did was I just looked at Enron's headline numbers, the uh, fraudulent numbers that the company reported, and we can see as a second digit, they loved the second digit zero. Seven out of 12 of these headline numbers are second digit zeros. And numbers that have a second digit zero are ones that sort of just make some threshold, just make 40 billion, just make 100 billion, and the like. And uh, this is an interesting uh, sort of... Uh, thing that I saw. Um, unfortunately, I could only see it with hindsight. I wish I'd been able to see it with foresight. Now, what types of data should follow Benford's Law, and how is this relevant to accounting? The first data type is a sequence, and in a sequence, each number is simply a function of one or more numbers before it. It could be as simple as each number is double the number before it, so we would go something like 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, numbers that darts players uh, know all too well. A distribution. This is, in fact, what a distribution looks like, and this is the distribution of the purchasing card data from Chapter 2. Lots of small numbers, fewer big numbers, and this is for the category 2,800 and over. This is how these numbers are distributed distributed, and indeed, if numbers have this type of a distribution, uh, Benford's Law is almost certain to follow. A function. Here we have a function. I'm sure you remember this from maths, from high school maths, or from college maths. 
and certain functions will follow Brentford's law, but the mathematicians have to make some assumptions, and they'll usually uh, assume it goes from here to infinity, or it covers some range that is representative, and that uh, it follows Brentford's law. This one here talks about the differences between the ranked values of almost any data set, and this is actually true. If we take a series of numbers, uh, it could be any data, um, stock market data, accounting data. I rank it from smallest to largest, and I then take the differences. Those differences almost always will follow Benford's law. So we have four situations when data follows Benford's law. Not every function follows Benford's law. That one does, and others don't. Not every distribution follows Benford's law. This one does, and some don't. Not every sequence follows Benford's law. Um, Some do and some don't. And the last one is the data is made up of a mixture of distributions. This is one distribution, and I have different distributions over here. This is known as the uniform distribution. Uh, this is the normal, the bell-shaped uh, um, distribution. If I took a whole lot of different distributions and mixed the numbers together, the result will be Benford's Law. So when it comes to accounting data, not all of this is relevant. The two that are relevant is, I could have random samples or a geometric, uh, from a geometric sequence. And if I have numbers that are sampled from this geometric sequence, it'll probably follow Benford's law. So if my data has that as its underpinning, I could be Benford. If my data has this as its underpinning, I could also be Benford. Lots of different types of data. And an example here would be journal entries. You know, I could have sales numbers that follow some distribution. I could have salaries that follow another distribution, expenses, cost of goods sold, liability numbers. And when I mix all these numbers together, if, if I really have a, a truly random uh, mixture of distributions, then Benford will be indeed the result. So it's either this reason or that reason which should cause me to expect my data to follow Benford's law. Other considerations, I need my numbers to be describing the size. Telephone numbers don't describe size. House addresses don't describe size. Zip codes don't address size either. No built-in minimum, although zero is okay. No built-in maximum, otherwise things are going to uh, congregate around the maximum and it'll upset my digits no end. And no numbers used as labels, and we love to use numbers as labels. Our highways have uh, um, labels. Um, products in a supermarket have labels, and that's known as the barcode. We have social security numbers and the like. And I need more small items than large numbers, but these are just sort of general considerations. The previous one is the one that really counts. now. Just a little bit of uh, something, uh, something more about this random sample from a geometric sequence. What I did was, in the book I show you, that the total revenue numbers of corporations follow Benford's law very nicely, as do the inventory. And the point I'm trying to make here is, for one company I have sort of a rough geometric sequence and I'm pulling this number. For another company I have a rough geometric sequence and I pull this number. Rough geometric, pull here. Rough geometric, pull there. Rough geometric, pull at the end. And when I combine all these samples from different geometric sequences, since each one should follow Benford's law roughly, when I draw from them, the result should follow Benford's law even better than roughly and near perfectly. And that is what we see in the example in the book. Now, running these Benford's law tests, Really nice to do. I'll just give you the rundown here, the quick Cliff Notes version. Um, this is my data, and this is my purchasing car data. These are the amounts. It's a uh, hundred and uh, something thousand. I'm going to put it into the Negrini cycle that has served so many people so well down through the ages. You have to remember to copy these formulas down to the bottom and it'll do so if we do that and if you have no blank rows. 
Um, this is just looking at numbers that are greater than or equal to 10. This is looking at numbers greater than or equal to 10. If you want to change that criteria, you actually have to go in and just change these formulas. But uh, that being said, there's my graph of the first digits, the digits 1 through 9. The line is Benford's Law. The bars are the actual proportions. This is an okay graph. Uh, not going to win any prizes in the Benford's Law. Olympics. This is the first two digits going from one zero to double nine. This is the Benford's law line over here. We go from 4.1% down to about a half percent. That's how quick it was. But even better still, I have a more detailed um, video. And if we go here, there it is. Forensic analytics. I'm just going to open it up here. There we go. That is the title of the video. Uh, it has the free Excel software. This is longer than this one. This is uh, 25 minutes. And indeed, I go for the first, um, how long again? For the first, I lost my notes. There we go. So for the first 15 minutes, I do a discussion followed by 11 minutes of how to do this and exactly what's happening in this file and in those tables over there. Um, you can do it. This is the um, URL, Benford's Law Test in Excel, and you should be good to go with 25 action-packed minutes over there. I also in the chapter show you how to do the calculations in Access and the idea is that you'll do the calculations, the counts, in Access. And all you have to do is take your Access result, put your cursor there, right-click and do Paste. And then these counts will be the correct counts. But Excel will then do your graph. And all you have to do is click on first two and you'll get the graph. You need to put the counts in the right places here if you want these other tabs to work. So... By way of a summary, Benford's Law is all about the expected frequencies of the digits in tabulated data. I either need to, exp I either need to see the underlying rationale being these are geometric sequences and I'm pulling uh, numbers from these sequences, or everything must be just a mixture of distributions. And the other uh, considerations we spoke about was no minimum, no maximum, and the like. And on that exciting note, we're done. So it is bye-bye.